and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chunk and Run Podcast. I'm your host, Zane Smith, and with me, as always, is my other host, Zachary Smith. Zach, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing good. Doing great. Doing great? Yeah, I know you are. That was pretty wild, man. That was a pretty wild Masters. It was a great Masters. It was a good Masters. It wasn't, obviously, it wasn't the best. Um, you know, a lot of people tuned out just because Scotty was winning uh, by a lot. I even talked to some people on the range at my club that were like, that's the reason they were out there on the range is because he was up by so much. I understand that. Um, but yeah, Zach, uh, Zach made a comeback in DraftKings this past week. Fun, fun. We'll be doing the punishment, so stay tuned for that. If you haven't already, click like on this video. Also, subscribe to the podcast. And if you're a podcast listener, please subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Uh, we'll be happy to entertain you with our uh, sensual voices. Um, yeah, that's not the word I was looking for. Um, I was looking for like suave, like that that kind of word. Does that make sense? Yeah. That makes more sense. Suave voices. Very smooth, silky smooth. Just like Jim Nance at Augusta. Jim Nance. That was a terrible impression. You stink. Um, so, yeah, so Scotty Scheffler takes home the green jacket, Zach. Yeah. That was pretty uh, impressive. Couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. I don't know why I said it like that. It's not like it happened to him. He actually he won it. Um, yeah. And we'll, we'll get into some interesting things about Scotty, a little bit about his background, where he comes from. Crazy statistics. But, Zach, do you have a uh, trivia for us? Well, Zane, uh, I'll get back to you on this. The answer's no. <laughs> okay, so it. no trivia this week. No trivia this week. Zach has been busy all day, um, so we'll, we'll give him a, a pass this time. So, Scotty Scheffler takes home the green jacket. Really, really great. Loved the uh, closing ceremony. He did four putt the last hole, which is uh, pretty wild. I don't know if you saw that, but I mean, I'm, I don't know who didn't see it. Not a great finish. I am one who absolutely loves the player who wins to make a pretty big putt to finish, a one putt to finish, like Gary Woodland at the I was PGA. Just about to say Gary Woodland. I mean, that was like one of the coolest things great I've ever seen. Too. He's great. Yeah, you suck. <laughs> Shut it. <laughs> um, so, uh, so yeah. I, I mean, I'm always one to one to like that better. I, that's why whenever Bubba won uh, his two green jackets, I mean, his uh, that that the first one obviously whenever he hit the hook shot, you know, from the pine straw, that's a cool shot in and of itself. And of course, you gotta give him the two putt. I get it. Um, but when it came when it came to his other one, I, I don't like seeing people two putt. That's just not something that I do. Um, and especially when it's a four putt. Yeah, it's kind of ending on a low note, but I mean, hey. I mean, at that point, I, I saw this on Twitter. I saw someone tweet this out on Twitter, but at that point, just six putt and say you, say you won with a six putt. You yeah. Know? Like, that'd be, that'd be cool. You'd be like, hey, dude, I just won with a six putt. Yeah. Might as well. Could do it. But anyway, that is, uh, that's something. So crazy statistics, Zach. We're about to talk some crazy numbers. Absolutely insane numbers. I'm talking, You will. this will blow your mind numbers. First one, Tiger Woods is the only player in, in golf history to win four times in one year with two of those wins, one of them being a major mm -hmm. and the other one being, being a world season. golf championship. Okay? That's just outstanding. It really is pretty Scotty Scheffler has won four starts, has won four golf tournaments in 57 days. We have never seen, we haven't seen something like that since, since Tiger, Tiger Woods. Yeah. I just, I mean, Zach, do you have any thoughts on this? It's kind of being kind of quiet over it's there. It's kind of crazy to see him on the run he's on. It's kind of crazy. Okay, because like you expect. I don't want to say you expect uh, anyone to do Like, you expect someone when they get hot to, you know, compete at a major, compete in many events in a row, 
and be like at the top or near the top in a bunch of events. But to win four times in 57 days is is it's insane. It is insane. So here's here's what I wanted to I wanted to give you guys the list. Just to throw this out there. Tiger Woods did this in 99, 2000, 2001, 2002. Not 2003, 2004, 2005, 2006, 2007, 2008. He's done that a total of eight times. Yeah. That's absolutely nuts. That's... And it hasn't been done since 2008, and Scotty Scheffler just did it. That it that just blows my mind. By the way, it was PGA Tour Communications that uh, their Twitter yeah. that tweeted that out. I mean, I just. Yeah, Th- today, so Tiger Woods by Dylan Dethier, Deth- 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 I-, I can't remember, ever remember how to pronounce his name, but he said, if you've forgotten how big of a golf nerd Tiger Woods is, today he compared Scotty Shuffler's current run to Fred Couples in 1992. Tiger was 16 at the time. <laughs> so that's that's pretty wild. So I have a crazy stat. I'm ready for it. So please don't say something I already have written on my docket. I hope it's not what you have written on your docket. I will smack you vigorously. So, um, Scotty Scheffler currently, all right, since the start of 2020, is 36 under in majors. That's unreal. 36 under in majors. Okay, that is better than 29 under Colin Morikawa. Better than 27 under John Rahm. 20 under Louis Oosthuizen, 19 under Dustin Johnson, 16 under Brooks Kepka, 11 under Paul Casey, Xander Shoffley 9 under, Hideki Matsuyama 8 under, and Rory McIlroy 4 under. That's the top 10 guys in the majors since 2020, and he leads them by 5. That's crazy. And we had twice the amount of majors in 2021. Yeah, we did. Wait, twice the amount? You had an extra U.S. Open. You had an extra Masters. Did you have an extra Open championship or no? We had an extra U.S. Open. Didn't we? No. I think it was just the Masters. Oh, is it just the Masters? Yeah. Hold on. I'm pretty pretty sure about that. So you're going to fact check me here? You, you got to fact, yeah. You got to look that up. While you're looking that up, I'm going to go on to my next point. You ready? Scotty Scheffler's year so far. Just give you a, guys a background. John Rahm, all of last year, not talking within this amount of within the, within the amount of events we've already played. John Rahm last year was the money list leader at seven point seven million dollars. Care to guess what Scotty Scheffler is? I don't know. I'm scared to even know the number. Over ten million dollars already this season. That's we still have twenty. Just to put that into perspective for people, we still have twenty events left in the year. Twenty events left in the year, and he's already surpassed it by three million, close to three million. Wow, that that just doesn't make sense. With a, uh, and, and here's a great stat about Colin Morikawa. We just brought him up. With a top five on Sunday, Colin Morikawa has finished top five in each of the four majors in just nine major starts. He is the only one in golf history to have ever done this. That's Dang. nuts. That's crazy. So what's going on in golf right now? It's just... It's awesome to be a to be a witness of it, mm-hmm. to see Tiger Woods, and then obviously, not only that, you had Tiger Woods come back way faster than everybody predicted. Yeah, way faster than everybody predicted. We were all saying British Open. He said British Open, and he will play the British Open. He, he put that, that. He put way. that timeline on himself, uh-huh. and he put his entry in for the U.S. Open. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. I mean, it's just amazing to be in golf right now with everything going on. Rory McIlroy makes a roaring comeback in the Masters to put some pressure on Scotty Scheffler. Love that. 
I know because you picked him. Yeah. Shot 64 on Sunday. <laughs> That's crazy. That's nuts. And just to put that in perspective, Everyone the rest of the field was old. over par. Yeah. That he and he hold down on 18. I know. Out of the bunker, of the bunker. and Colin Morikawa did too. But like, that's insane. Sixty four, the way that course was playing is like. You imagine like a perfect round. That's pretty dang close to. Perfect. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, how hard it was playing. Yeah. On the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, that's I mean, crazy. It was nuts. It was absolutely. And, and for the record, for those of you who don't live in this part of the country, um, let's just give some Saturday weather ideas of what it was like. So we don't live that far from Augusta. Mm-hmm. Um, Saturday morning, it was literally freezing mm-hmm. and 15 to 20 mile an hour winds, 30 mile an hour gusts in the afternoon. Or forty mile an hour gusts in the afternoon. Literally, almost blew me over while I was giving a lesson. Mm-hmm. It was blowing. It was blowing hard. All right, and to shoot under par in those conditions because we did see Cam Smith played well on Saturday. That's insane to me. I, yeah. I like that's crazy. Obviously, he's, a, he's another guy that you gotta look for in these future events. Him, Scotty. I'm trying to think of who else is on a on a tear right now. I mean, Adeki's still I'm saying Burns, but. Ideki is in that same category. If you're talking about winner, wins in the past year. Yeah, I guess. I guess three year. wins in the past year. If you're talking year, I'm talking like within the last six months. Okay. Well, I don't think he's been kind of. No, nah, I don't want to say he strong. played well this week. He's he was played, on. He, he played on well. Leaderboard. There's a chance if he would have made a push on Sunday, he could have won. He played well. Yeah. No, I'm not saying he didn't. I'm just saying it's. If he, I feel like he's losing steam. You're right, though. There at the year turn, mm-hmm. he was hot. Yeah. He was a hot commodity, especially on DraftKings. And he's still playing well. So. Yeah, he's still playing. He's still a good pick. Like, yeah. if you pick him for DraftKings or if you if you pick him to win. I mean, not likely he's going to miss the cut. He's most likely going to finish top 20. He's going to make the cut. He's most likely going to finish top Another crazy stat, world number one golfers to ever win the Masters whenever they were holding the world number one position since it's been, you know, kept. Mm-hmm. Um, Ian Woosnam in 91, Fred Couples in 92, Tiger Woods in 2001 and 2002, Dustin Johnson in 2020, and Scotty Scheffler in 2022. There's only five of them. Now, granted, that's not a long history because it's world Yeah, I mean, we've only been ke- te- keeping it since, like, the 90s. Yeah. Because Jack... It's still 30 years. Jack definitely won it when he would have been world number one. For sure. <laughs> I, I think that goes without saying. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Yep. Joins a pretty exclusive list for sure. He really does. Players to win the Masters at ages 25 years or younger. Scotty Scheffler, Horton Smith, Gary Player, Byron Nelson, Jack Nicholas, Selvi Ballesteros, Jordan Spieth, and Tiger Woods. Yep. It, the list goes on and on of how amazing this past weekend was. We saw Tiger Woods come back. It's just been a great, it's a great tournament. Great tournament. Great. It's been a great past year for golf. Mm-hmm. In 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 total, it really has. Uh, we also had something on at, at the Masters that happened. Um, we had some flubs. We had some people flubbing it. Oh gosh. I think Zach knows what's about to come up. So, during the CBS broadcast, we had a problem, Zachro. So, while uh, the I think the camera was on Cam Smith or Scotty um, on hole, what was it, probably 15 or 16, mm-hmm. and they're getting ready for their shot, all of a sudden, you hear Nick Faldo say on air, he says, oh my gosh, I can't believe what just happened. Now, Zach, the only other people on the course at the time... Are basically Rory McIlroy and Colin Morikawa, and they're on eighteen. They're hit. They're they've they've got bunker shots in on eighteen. Yeah. And he and he, the camera goes to Rory, and you're like, I can't believe what he just did, because you know what's gonna happen now. Yeah. You know what's gonna happen now. It's ruined. You can never take it back. Yeah. It's uh. He's been there eighteen years. I thought you were going to mention how bad Victor Hovland did around the greens, but yeah, no, that was he for an experienced broadcaster. That's a horrible. Oh, mistake. that's no news. Hovland's had a problem with with chipping. Well, it was bad. 
It was, but you have to chip at the mat. You have to be it able. It was some to, of the worst short game I've ever seen on TV. But you have to be able to chip at the mat. I realize that, but it's some of the worst short game I've seen on TV. Okay, I'm just saying, that's not news. Like he needs to put a chipper in. The what is news? <laughs> what is news? Is Faldo doing what he did? He did say he screwed up. Uh, he went on the Dan Patrick show. He did say that he screwed that up. That wasn't exactly words he used, but yeah, it wasn't the words he used. <laughs> We won't say the words he used. Yeah. But he said that was a rookie mistake, and he said he screwed up. He said he got caught up in that moment for a split second, and, re- and he reacted. Yeah. Uh, he, he he did make a mention, like... And and I under- I kind of understand where he's coming from, mm-hmm. but at the same time, you're a broadcaster. You can't be telling yeah. people what is going to happen before they get to see it. Yeah. You just have to act like... You have to act like you didn't see it. You have to act like... Oh my gosh, Rory's got a chance here. Let's see what he can do. Yeah. This is a very and he can even set it up. He can set it up with the suspense. He can say, This is a really difficult bunker shot. You know, the chances of him making this are next to nil. You could you know what I mean? Yeah. You can build. You so, can make it interesting. So here's he a question. He decided to absolutely ruin it. Here's a question, Zane. Do Sorry, think, Nick. Sorry, Nick. Do you think that that was him? rooting for McElroy. Yeah, I mean obviously. Yeah. Obviously. No, he even said that. He he said that something like for a split second he saw Rory in a green jacket. And not that's not uncalled for because say Scotty Scheffler folds down in seventeen and eighteen. Four putts twice in a row or something like it's that. It's easy to get blocked out on eighteen. Yeah. By the way. Mm-hmm. So with it being that easy to get blocked out on eighteen of course, he has a chance. Yeah. After holding that. <laughs> so, so crazy. Oh, gosh. Yeah. That's yeah. wild. That's wild. It's it, insane to think that someone that far back, because he was not even close. No. He could even... The charge that he... I mean, that's... Almost, it, makes, it makes up for him blowing up before. Yeah. Even without him winning... It makes up for him blowing up mm-hmm. before. I honestly, I firmly believe that. Yeah, firmly believe that. So good on, good on, good on McElroy. You know. Yeah. Good on McElroy. Great, great round. Shot sixty four, which is amazing at Augusta, especially in the conditions. People don't real people that don't play golf don't realize how good that is. So they got- see they see they see them playing in other events and yeah. shooting that low and going. And and basically saying, oh yeah, that's doable. Yeah. Why don't they shoot even? Why don't they just shoot even par? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Aren't they the best in the world? Yeah. Yeah, they are. The the people that say the that is. make kind of make me angry because I like seeing hard golf. I yeah. like seeing them. I like seeing them struggle. So here's a question for you, Zane, because I got to ask this. I'm ready. Uh, what do you think you would shoot at the Masters this week? After watching the tournament, what do you think you would have shot this week at the Masters? See, I saw Laird, uh, Laird Shepard, uh, who was who played in the Georgia Cup. He was the British am, amateur. Mm-hmm. He shot 22 over. So my guess is something over 22 over. Really? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think maybe. Like, if I'm playing right maybe 22 over maybe 20 over you yeah. gotta realize it's four rounds of golf yeah in, well in he, random was, weather well that was two rounds of golf because he missed the cut oh yeah that's very true not four rounds of golf it's two rounds Ooh, of golf. dude yeah but i'm guessing you mean two rounds in case unless you missed the cut well, i was just saying like if you would have played augusta once this week like oh just one round yeah like what would be my average? What would be your number? What would be my number? Par seventy two. I'd probably shoot, honestly, good round eighty. Okay. Just saying. Good yeah, round, I good said. Round 80. I said. From their tees. Good if round I 80. played great, I would be able, might be able to break eighty. Good round eighty. I said seventy eight, and then no. N- listen. Come on, man. If I had a great round, I know you. <laughs> they don't. I do. Zane, let's play around. Huh? Okay, we will. I'm sick of this man bad mouthing me. I'm, I'm going to smoke this man. How is that bad mouthing you? I just said I'd shoot 80. 
I said that's playing my best. And I said you said a good round. You didn't say. I said okay. I said good round. I said great round. Like everything was working. You didn't say that. You said seventy eight. I said great round. I'm. You did not say great. I round. I did say great round. Roll back the tape. Anyway, um, and then probably it'd be anywhere from like seventy eight to if I play bad, like nineties. Mm. Like if I play bad, there's a legitimate chance you shoot ninety out there. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. If you're not careful, yeah. You're four putting. Yeah. Like the cert like a certain masters champion. Yeah, like a certain masters champion, exactly. Um speaking of four putting, Tiger Woods and his final round. Oh god. <laughs> couldn't scare the whole day. <laughs> Good lord. Uh he even said he couldn't make a putt. Yeah, he said uh That's the worst putting. It felt done. like he was doing putting practice like he hit a thousand putts out there today. And if you watched him in that final round, it looked like he hit a thousand putts. I believe day. it. He, there wasn't very many of of uh, camera pan shots where he made anything, anything. Yeah, he had a hard, he had a couple hard lip outs, but I mean that weekend was tough for him on the putting green, especially because he started pretty good on the greens. To be fair, dude was hurting. I mean, you yeah, you, you, you could, could see, see him limping. He he's limping, and not only that, he's but missing. But I will well. say what. What a man. Like, the... Proved me wrong. I, I didn't think he'd make the cut, and he did. Yeah, oh yeah, he proved you wrong. He, <laughs> he definitely proved you wrong. You know, I, Oh yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. I'm just saying. You you were wrong. You know what? Uh, I don't... Uh, I'm not going to mention his name, but the ping rep agreed with me, and he made a bet that Tiger... Would not make the cut. He well, he lost see. that bet. He did lose that bet, but I talked to him. You lose that bet? You lose that bet nine times talked out of ten? I talked to him last Friday morning, and he's like, I need Tiger to drop like a 76 today. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, alas, he made the cut, which is good for golf. I'm glad he made the cut. Oh, Let yeah. me reiterate. I, don't, I didn't think he was going to miss the cut because I wanted him to miss the cut. I thought he was going to miss the cut because his timeline was the open and mm. he's coming in at the masters the two halves of the year you know what i'm saying yeah absolutely but uh absolutely yeah. fantastic tournament fun to watch um I, I again like you said i love tough golf and uh yeah so we've got another guy who flubbed it after the masters we have terrell hatton so, Zach, we all know that the Masters is difficult. We all know that Augusta National is difficult. We all know that it's one of the most, one of, probably one of the most challenging golf courses in all of mankind has ever generated. Yeah. This man decided that he was going to, I guess he was talking to Golf Digest. I saw this, yeah. Oh. And he said, um... Yeah, let's 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 go to the let's roll the tape. He said, uh, "Yeah, but you can hit good shots here and not get any reward for it." Hatton said, "It's unfair at times. I don't agree with that." This is okay. So this is this is actually kind of funny, okay? Because a few years ago, you remember Rory? I do. Said that European courses were too easy and that you could see bad golf be played and people shoot way low mm -hmm. because you could spray it all over the place, but the rough's not thick. There's no tree. There's no trees. And that is why... So I, so what? What? Uh, so it's kind of funny because you know, when you look at Augusta National, obviously it's a difficult course, but... It's difficult for a whole lot of reasons. It's difficult for a whole lot of reasons. The greens are one of them. Uh, landing spots. The landing zones are one or another. Um, and let's not, you know, I'm not going to say go any two ways about it. Uh, he played bad. Yeah. yeah. He did. It wasn't like he was hitting great shots and getting bad breaks. He was missing greens. He was missing putts. He was not hitting fairways. He played bad. Yeah. So to go out there and say you can hit good shots and not get any reward for it, it's like, well, then hit a good shot. 
and then actually let's see the result. Yeah, and we, that's saw, not we saying saw that, what good shots got people. Yeah, and l- that's not saying that he didn't hit any good shots the entire tournament, because obviously he did. He's a very, very good, talented player. Here's my problem with it, and it goes on. Ready? He yeah. says, if you hit a good shot, you should end up near the hole. Not then not then short-sided into a bunker because of the slopes that they've created and stuff. Yeah, I don't think it's a fair test at times. And when you hit good shots, you're not reward rewarded for it. It shows. I would love to see this man play at Donald Ross. Girl. I just yeah, dude. This if man, you think you think like Donald Ross is like notorious for this. Yeah, turtle backs, man. Yeah, where you can hit a shot. It looks like they buried his coffin underneath the green. You can hit a shot, and the only reason, well, the main reason I know this is because our grandfather, yeah, Gail Shaw. He's a member at uh, Mark Twain Golf and Country Club, yeah. Elmira, New York. Very, very good course. Very um, course. But there are, it, there's legitimately holes. Yeah. Up, I, specifically a... Where if you did not play it beforehand, you would not be able to play it. Yeah. Because some of the greens, some of the slopes, unless you know, unless you've played it yep. enough times, you don't know where to hit the ball. Precisely. So there is a specific hole, and you remember you'll remember this. It's about a two hundred yard par three uphill, and it's basically three levels. Okay, you have a front level. No, it's two levels. Two levels. Two levels. You have a front level and you have a back level. Mm-hmm. The front level has a false front. Yeah. Very steep false front. If you roll off the front of the green, it's twenty yards away from the green. Yeah. In the middle is another very steep slope that separates the levels. Mm-hmm. If you are playing to a front pin position on that hole, if you hit it into the hill behind the hole, mm. it will roll off the front of the green. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. It could be. It's like whether it's a good shot, it's a bad shot. It's a bad shot because you should know. Well, if you played the course before, you should know if I hit this second hill, it's gonna roll all the way off the front. Oh yeah. Is it frustrating? Yes. <laughs> But was it a good shot? No. Yeah. You you didn't play the shot that the hole required you to hit. Yes. So this is this is my problem with this statement. This is treating golf like darts on a dartboard. Yeah. That is not golf. Yeah. Okay. In some instances, it it works like that for yeah. sure. Like if you're just playing in regular little parkland course, you know, flat greens. Florida courses, just an elevated green. Yep. Just look, basically looks like a dartboard. The Florida Swing. Florida. How did Terrell Hatton... Did he he won a lot in the Florida, Florida Swing, didn't he? I don't know. I don't think... Oh, he that's did. right. He didn't win an event <laughs> yeah. in the Florida Swing where every did. green is completely flat and... Anyway. <laughs> flatter. <laughs> Much... Flatter. The course um, is flatter. The greens are flatter. More Mostly elevated. But yeah, so th- that's my point is it's not that. Yeah, it's not. It's yeah. it's being able to play the 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 hole in front of you. Yep. How it requires you to play it. Sometimes, sometimes it, and sometimes it maybe finding a way that nobody has found yet. People do that all the time. One of the coolest shots in all of Masters history was that huge uh, hybrid. Was it a hybrid or it was a wood? Wood by Louis Oosthuizen made the double eagle. Yep. Right. What is that? A whole six, seven? It was that par five. Which one is that? Par five goes down the hill. Yeah. Everybody knows what I'm talking yeah. about. Hits it, right? Hits the front of the green. Mm-hmm. With that shot, I don't think he's thinking it's going to go next to the hole. Yeah. But it hits, rolls all the way to the back, and that slope takes it all the way down the hole, and it drops. Yep. Right? In his mind, he's not thinking, I'm going to go at the pin. No. Right? You just think, I'm going to hit a good shot right at the front of the green. Whatever happens, happens. Yep, exactly. And it's it's weird to me. And if he if Hatton was actually firing at pins, yeah, he's an idiot. <laughs> he's a you moron. don't fire pins in the Masters. You don't do that. That, that reminds me of Rory McIlroy a long time ago. I think you remember this. Whenever Olympics? Webb Simpson Olymp- at Olympics okay. said, I'm just going to go out there and attack it. It was literally like the toughest U.S. Open setup ever. Literally. Not like, even, not even figuratively. Yeah, it was literally, literally the hardest. And they did that because congressional the previous year was perceived as too easy. Yeah. So they overreacted and made it 
insanely hard. To be fair, Congressional was easier. It was much easier, and it, the Greens were playing soft because of the weather. Yeah, it doesn't... I don't think Congressional played as hard as it should have. That's not just take anything away from Rory. Yeah. He played amazing. He uh, he blew that he tournament won. out of the water. Yeah, he won by a long shot. Yeah. But I think... I, I Again, I prefer to see people struggle. Mm-hmm. Like, the Masters this year was great because everybody struggled. Even Scotty, how well he played, dude, you could tell it was hard because everybody was, like, over par. You remember how many times he took that jacket off on Sunday? The vest? Yeah. It's like 427 times. Yeah, that's crazy. But, uh... Couldn't decide. And, the, and if you want to talk about golf courses that aren't fair, you have to look at courses like... Where where did Jordan Spieth win the U.S. Open at? Jordan Spieth? Uh, that's a good question. I can't even remember. It was the one where everything was like putt putt. Yeah, you keep talking. I'm gonna look. It uh, up. but like everyone remembers looking back at that, you saw like twenty PGA Tour professionals come out and be like, "These greens are are gone. They're just not even here." You could see like the diff- Chambers Bay. Chambers Bay. Oh, I I knew that. Why did I even look? I guess because I always think of Chambers Bay and I think of Dustin Johnson blowing it. I don't think of... Sorry, No, that's Dustin. Whistling Straits, isn't it? No, that was that was Chambers Bay. Was Three-putted the final green. That's Chambers oh, Bay. Oh, Chambers Bay. And then he also did the thing at Whistling that's, Straits. That's a PGA. Oh, that was PGA? That was a PGA championship. Oh, okay. Yeah. Where he got screwed? Yeah. Okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, that was... And you could tell by watching... The balls do this when they putt. Just going back and forth on the line. That's because they, they literally, I think they top uh, seated with fescue. fescue. Yeah. And it looked splotchy. It looked horrible. The greens were like rocks. Like, they weren't spinning at all. That was also the same tournament that Jason Day took that tumble on. Whenever yep. he fell because of the vertigo. Yeah. Yeah. I same mean, one. it was, that is a course that's set up poorly yeah i it's not a u.s open course yeah so i've always and and maybe you'll disagree with me let's have this little debate right now okay um i think that all u.s open courses should have tree line every single one of them because u.s open the the, in the u.s golf is always before before uh before all these new link style courses came in Golf in in the U.S. has always been more parkland. It's always been more tree lines, yeah, hills, right, yeah. hilly, not flat, rolling hills because it started in the Northeast, mm-hmm. and the push that the U.S. that that I guess it was the USGA made over like to the past make it four years, putting open. it at hills where it's. We're putting it at courses that are more link style just is atrocious to me. Yeah, it just doesn't it. feel like a U.S. Open. As bad as I thought Congressional was because it played very soft and, and stuff like that, Yeah, um, it still was tree-lined. It still looked like a U.S. Open course. Yeah. Whereas, like... Yeah, that part I didn't mind. Yeah, Chambers Bay was desolate. It looked weird. It just didn't look... It, it looked wasn't, like... It wasn't a links. No. But it also wasn't a U.S. Open course. Yeah, it just it didn't fit with either. Yeah, and so it just kind of felt like, why are we playing the U.S. Open here? Yeah, a good example that I always give is Champions Gate, right? Yeah. So if anybody's ever played Champions Gate, you have the National and the International. Now I don't know what kind of shape they're in now. Um, they've went back and forth over the years, but the Nationals mostly tree lined. There's some holes that aren't. Yeah, that's fine. But you have a lot more tree line. It's a lot tighter. There's not you can't spray it. Yeah. International's a little different. Yeah, you have some water, but there's, there's a lot of holes where if I spray it with the driver, I'll be all right. Yeah. There's can, bunkers too uh, on the international. A for lot of sure. Bunkers. For sure. But there's places where are not down the middle, where you can miss it and have a decent shot in. Yeah. National, that doesn't, that isn't the case. Yeah. You have a lot of places where, you have a lot of huge misses. Yeah. Where you really get into trouble. Yeah. And that's how I define a U.S. Open course. 
Uh-huh. I define a U.S. Open course as something so freaking difficult because you've got 20 yard, 15 to 20 yard fairways lined with thick rough, ankle high rough trees, trees lining most of the fair, if not all, most mm-hmm. of the fairways, mm-hmm. bunkers placed next to landing zones, mm-hmm. bunkers placed behind, behind and around greens. Yeah. That's what I look for yeah. in a U.S. Open. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, no, we, I agree with you. So, Not yeah. Really a debate. And, that, I mean, that's the difference. That is the difference between the Masters and the U.S. Open. Masters a lot, is a lot, a, a, relies a lot more on Augusta's undulation yeah. as the thing that makes it so difficult. Yep. Whereas U.S. Open, yeah, there's undulation. We saw it with Olympic. But, but uh it's a lot more about all the other factors that go into making a golf course difficult. You know what I mean? Not being able to shape shots like you want to on given holes. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, do you agree with that? No, I, I completely agree. It requires, you know, being able to shape the ball both ways. It requires and that's why being, I like it. being more on all of the time. Yeah. That's why it was so amazing with Scotty because he does not have a reliable draw. Yeah. He takes such a weak left hand grip. Mm-hmm. Like it's so weak. He just, I don't know if you saw him on a, what was it, hole 11? Mm-hmm. That par five. <laughs> he's, he's like swinging to right field, trying to swing out of his shoes to right field to get that thing oh, coming come the other it's way. It's not pretty. Like it, his swing is already what I consider not very beautiful. Yeah. But but that one, man, it looks bad whenever he's trying to curve that thing left. <laughs> it really does. Didn't hit a great shot there on Sunday either. But, but he, you know, he won. So yeah, this is what it is. Yeah. So uh, both of those guys flubbed it this past weekend. Faldo and Hatton. Yeah. I just, uh, I wish he would retract his statement, Terrell. And we expect a retraction Tyrell. by next episode. Yeah, expect a retraction, Tyrell. Uh, the PGA Junior League is starting up, so that's news going on around the country. The PGA Junior League is starting up. We're excited for that there at the Golf Club of Georgia. We've got a good amount of kids this season. I know, Zach, you're doing something similar, right, with the academy program? Yeah, we're doing the academy program. Pretty excited about it. Yeah, you've um, got teams kind of like the PGA. It's really yeah. good format. If you know, if there's parents listening out there, you find a PGA Junior League or something near you. Yeah. Really helps get the kids involved and really gets them hit, you know, playing a great game they'll be able to play for the rest of their life. Absolutely. And usually the coaches, right, like me and you, you know, will be able to work with if they're beginners. Great, you know, we'll be able to work with them at, at their skill level. And um, yeah, just make sure they got some clubs because not all, not all courses carry kids clubs for rent and stuff. So yeah, obviously make sure you do that. In other news, U.S. Open entries. Tiger Woods and the lefty, Phil Phil McDaddy, has registered an entry for the U.S. Open at Torrey Pines. Okay, that's exciting. Who, who finishes better? If you had Tiger to pick right now, or if Tiger or Phil at Torrey, my Pines. money's on Tiger. Yeah, at Torrey, Just Tiger given, at given Torrey. His, given his history and at his, Torrey and his history of playing injured at that course at I feel, Torrey. Feel yeah. pretty good about him, at dude. How how legendary! I'm actually probably gonna pick him. <laughs> I will too. How so, how legendary would that be if, if he, he were to win at second, Torrey? Second Torrey Pines U.S. Open with a bad leg. With a bad leg. That'd be nuts, dude. That'd be hilarious. I would lose uh, my mind. Lose my mind, man. No, Scheffler's going for the Grand Slam this year. Yeah, that'd be cool, dude. That would be epic. If he's the first person to do it since Bobby Jones, that would be epic. I would be. I would be. Uh, there's no chance. No I, chance. There's no chance. Technically, and this is the thing. This is where a lot of people forget. Um, Tiger basically did it. Tiger did the Tiger Slam. He just didn't start with the Masters that given year. So it's not the Grand Slam. It is though. Come it's on, man. Grand slam. It is though. It's not the Grand Slam. He did the Tiger. Tiger Slam counts, bro. No. He won four majors in a row. I don't care. It's not the Grand Slam. You can think whatever you want. You think you can just go to a Waffle House and 
Naughty waffles? I don't. Where were you going with that? What you think you can just go to a waffle house, order a waffle, and then call it a grand slam? No, you gotta order the grand slam. Okay. I can't just order the other stuff off the a la carte and make it a grand slam. Yeah, but it's more expensive. It is, but I'm saying, isn't that still a grand and, slam? Yeah, but it's not as good because you're paying more. But you just said it was, right? So that's the same thing. It's if I the order same it off contents. The a la carte, if I order it off the a la carte menu, No, you I know what? Same... I disagree with myself for two seconds Yeah, because you ruined it by saying yeah. No, yeah. I, you're still wrong. No, I'm right. Nope. I'm right, it counts. All right. So yeah, Phil McDaddy uh, signed up for entry, filed for entry for the U.S. Open. So I am begging the USGA to let him in, just begging, because they can choose not to. They can choose to make him go through. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I think because the U.S. Open, yes, U.S. Open, because he, obviously he's not a past champion. I think he would have to. I think he would have to qualify if they don't give uh, give him an exemption. But um. But hopefully, man, I hope he makes it. I hope they, they let him in. Um, so, yeah, that's that's pretty much it for News of the Week. Okay. Uh, Zach, Zach, do you have anything for, for people? Uh, not really. Not really? No. Um, it, was, it was a great tournament we got to experience last week. You know, treasure good majors because you don't get them every year. Yep. Or every major. Yep. Honorable mentions. Honorable mentions this week goes to Scotty Scheffler for using a molded training grip for practice at the Masters. There you go. Was that to help with his draw? Everybody clap for Scotty. Was that to help with his draw? I don't know. I guess. Had to have been, right? To strengthen his grip? Yep. Uh, Another shout out uh, that people might not know. Um, Vince Whaley, Will Zalatoris, and Scotty Scheffler all grew up in the same neighborhood. Something's in that water. I'm going to go raise my children there. <laughs> and the last thing that I wanted to say, where is mm. it? Go ahead, Zach. I'll mention Matthew Stafford. There you go. And Scotty Scheffler both went to the same high school. Hey. I saw that. I didn't know so that. So you had uh, the That's Masters awesome. champion and the Super Bowl champion quarterback. From the same high school in one year. That's awesome. That's pretty cool. Yep, the fire, the Southeastern University, SEU Fire, I played for the men's golf team. They finished second in an OKC. And Danielle Owens, who became the 12th player in the program in history to record an eagle. Really? Yeah, 12th player in history. That's, that's a, that's crazy. a woman, by the way. Yeah, so that's oh. the women's golf team. Oh, okay. Yeah, nothing against women. <laughs> But there's a lot more than 12 players in history that have recorded an eagle for Southeast. That's what I thought. Men. That was my confusion. So, yeah. So, congratulations to the ladies' golf team at Southeastern. Um, so, yeah. That's pretty much all we got today. DraftKings? DraftKings time. So, this week they're playing the RBC Heritage. Yeah. Uh, really looking forward to seeing what they can do, uh, what the players do. There's a lot of guys this week um, that are playing in Hilton Head, uh, South Carolina. Uh, from the Masters that were on the Masters um, on their uh, field, in their field. Yeah. I don't know why I couldn't find that word. But, uh, so, so Zach, let's go ahead uh, talk a little bit about, obviously, let's, let's go to picks. Let's go to picks. So, why don't you go first? All right. So, my picks this week, I'm very excited about... Uh, Going for five in a row. I'm pretty much the best ever at DraftKings. We just, both won money last week. Let's just go ahead and put that out there. I did well. Zane did fine. He just had Rory McIlroy in the final round. That's not okay. And you know who had Zane, Zane had in the final round? Cam, Cam Smith. Smith. Um, so. You're lucky this is kid friendly. So, this week, I'm um, starting off, again, bottom of the ticket. Joel Damon. Right. Uh, $6,800. He's played well in this event in the past. Uh, you know, a key to winning at this course is striking the ball well. They have very small greens at RBC. And uh, I, I think uh, my entire team is going to is gonna fit that. So I'm just going to put that out there at the beginning. But my first pick is Joel Nauman. Damon. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, my first pick is going to be... Um, 
He's won this tournament before him. He has been cut at this tournament twice, I believe, in the past four years. Um, but I, I feel a good, I feel a good turnaround. CT Pan, yep. I feel a good turnaround. Like He's pick. won this event, so That's I'm a good pretty pick. excited about him. Go ahead. So my next pick, uh, another good ball striker and a guy that you know a lot of people don't remember how good he actually used to be, mm-hmm. um, and that is Lucas Glover. Um, Seventy two hundred, pretty good. Yeah, he has been playing pretty good. Uh, Seventy two hundred dollars. Um, again, the name of the game here is ball striking. Lucas Glover is a very very good ball striker. Um, if he can get it together this week, he definitely has a chance to contend. Um, but uh, I feel very, very confident he's going to make the cut. Nice. I got Luke List. Luke List. He's by far the lowest um, points per game guy. However, however, he's had a history of playing well in this event. Yeah. And he played the Masters. So he's he's been playing pretty good this past year. Yeah. And, and Luke List, just like I was talking about, fantastic ball striker. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic ball Go striker. ahead. My next pick... Uh, the staple. I'm just gonna start calling him the staple. It's Maverick McNeely. Okay, there's nowhere else you can go. Seventy nine hundred dollars. He's played very well in this event in the past. He's finished runner up before, um, and he's playing better this year than he probably ever has his entire life. There's a legitimate shot he could win this event. He's only seventy nine hundred dollars. Very good ball striker. Very great player. Um, Maverick McNeely. He's only like twenty four, by the way. Hmm? Have you seen pictures of Maverick McKinley? He looks like no, he's 16. I, no, I know. He looks like a kid. He's like Will Zalatoris or Justin Thomas. He looks younger than both of those guys. <laughs> like, no, Will. Will looks pretty young. Uh, Maverick looks, like, looks a like, a like a little boy. I love you, though, Maverick. It's amazing how small those, some of those guys on tour are. Yeah. And <laughs> they still mash it. Yeah. It's wild. All right. Uh, my next guy is going to be the veteran. Cooch, Matt Coocher. I like that pick. Um, obviously, great ball striker. Like you're always saying, like you're like you're talking about. You know, he's doing pretty good this season. He's got 70 points per game fantasy wise. Uh, very excited about what he can do at the Heritage. He's played well in this in this tournament in the past. So yeah, Matt Coocher, Cooch. All right, my next pick. I I'm a huge fan of this guy. Okay, this is kind of a heart pick, but also, like I said, great ball striking equals great results at this event. Mm. Tommy Fleetwood, eighty-two hundred dollars. Uh, I feel pretty good about the pick. It is. I feel like overspending a little bit on him. It is. But at the same time, he has played well this year so far. Definitely an improvement from how he did last season. Mm. Um, he's got a great swing. He's a great ball striker. I feel like he's got a chance to contend. I'm gonna pick your boy. Billy Horschel. I decided Billy not to Horschel. last <laughs> So he's got 80 fantasy points per game. He's been great. He's been playing very, very well. Mm-hmm. Um, I just th- And he's also played well in this tournament in the past. So I'm excited for what Billy can do. I've picked him in the past in DraftKings. He hasn't always worked out for me. So let's hope that this changes things. Uh, this is a guy that I picked last week and a guy that does very well at this event, and that is Russell Henley. Okay? I did not pick did not no. so russell henley the first thing you need to know about russell henley is he has been mr consistent si- mr Just consistently mr consistency this season words are hard dude. he has not missed a cut he's got two top tens 86.5 fantasy points per game mm-hmm. he is number one on tour and strokes gain approach there's your there's your uh, ball striking thing. Yep. So. Number one on tour and strokes games approach. I don't see any reason why he wouldn't be a favorite. In this event. Ah, that makes sense. Uh, I've got Sung J M. We all know how well he's playing. Uh, had a chance there in the Masters if he continued to play well over the weekend. Fortunately, he faded a little bit coming down the stretch, yeah. but uh, he did play well. Mm-hmm. He's playing amazing this season. He's also played well in this tournament in the past. 80, uh, you know, he's got 81 fantasy points per game. I think he's an easy pick for this event. I think he has a chance to win, especially coming off the Masters. Go ahead with your... I'm picking a guy that's peeved this week. Peeved? He's peeved. He's peeved? He's peeved. At his caddy? At himself. Oh, okay. For hole 12 at the Masters. No way. And that You're is Cam him. Smith. You're picking him. I. This is the first time ever... I have picked Cam Smith, and it's very simple. Uh-huh. Cam Smith is number eight on tour and strokes gained approach. Yeah. Okay? 
He has played fantastically all season. He played well last weekend. Yeah, he's he played well, very well last weekend. You know, surprised me a little bit. To be honest, I know. Maybe you nervous. were telling me it was a bad pick. Uh, I was telling you Corey Connors is a bad pick, but and you were wrong about that as I well. I was wrong about that as well. Heck yeah, Corey <laughs> Connors still lost. Didn't pick him though. That's um, weird. but uh, 86. 98.6 fantasy points per game. He's the second highest in fantasy points per game on the DraftKings chart, mm. right below Justin Thomas. Um, but if you're going to buy Justin Thomas, you have to spend over eleven thousand dollars to do yeah. it. Whereas Cam Smith at ten eight, I feel pretty good about. Yeah, I didn't spend, and so I obviously a little di- bit different than last week. I didn't spend anything close to that on any get any single player mm. i picked shane freaking lowry so here's the thing guys if he doesn't have that kerfuffle with his caddy in the masters he has a real shot at winning the whole thing like wait i didn't hear about this yeah so if you, if you remember and you might want to go back and look at this his caddy gave him a wrong yardage at least that's what it appears to be and he got pissed at the caddy this must have been a reoccurring thing kind of over the week or maybe maybe during that week or maybe it's just been happening the last few weeks and we just haven't caught wind of it um but he was very upset and he ended up three or four putting that green i think it was hole 11 i think it was over the water Uh there at that par five so he laid up hit his wedge like at least 15 yards past the pin because the pin's up front that day yeah and yeah he was livid so i think without that he has a real shot at at going super low he was playing phenomenally he's playing pretty good phenomenally yeah uh going into this week though that's one thing does if unless there's personal issues that happening i think he's an easy top 10 this week okay easy top 10 so that's who that's why i picked him so that's that's my list um that's zach's list how you feeling i feel like this is another dub uh going for five in a row this week you know it seems like it's just a, a it's just like a recurring theme on the show that you lose let me go grab one more sip of this before we get wait before we before we do last week's punishment what you have to pick this week's punishment yes i do and i already have it picked out you ready yep Whoever loses this week okay. has to stick a ch- hot Cheeto, a flaming hot Cheeto, up your nose for five minutes. Five minutes? Five minutes. Okay. Yeah. You're worse about spice than I am. This is nah. just, This is only hurts you. Five minutes. And as a man of honor and a man of distinction, dude... Zach went and bought this moisturizing hand soap that is baby friendly, so hopefully I do not die after brushing my teeth with this. And don't worry, guys, I'm not gonna throw this away. This is, is going in my bathroom. It is black elderberry, which, if it tastes like that, that won't be bad, but I have a feeling it, it smells won't. really good. Smell it. No, it's, yeah, it's locked. <laughs> Why'd you lock it? It's, I haven't opened it yet. It does smell good. <laughs> All right, so how much do it? Just one, one little dab. Yeah, just like you would with a toothpaste. Yeah, that's fair. Do I have to press the button, or can I just scrub? You can just scrub. All right. So how long? How long do I have to do it for? Just ten seconds. Just ten? Yeah. So I here. feel like you already know how bad this is gonna be. Have you ever done this before? I've never brushed my teeth with soap. No. Hold on. Hold on. Let me. Get it on your nose? Yeah, on my nose Hold a little on. bit. I'll set a timer. Okay, it is ready? very potent. That that uh that smell. Yeah, it is. Ten seconds. Ready? I'm ready. Three, two, one, go. Is really, it really not that bad? It doesn't taste bad. It don't taste good. Dang it. Right, it don't taste good, but it don't taste bad. You know what I'm saying? You can stop. What? 
I can what? It just looks like you're brushing your teeth right now. I can what? I can I can stop? Yeah. Exactly. No, I, I can keep going like this all right. Well, that's been the Chuck and Run Podcast. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Zach, do you have anything to tell the audience? Like and subscribe to the video. We'll catch you guys next week. Alright, see you guys later. Like, subscribe to the video if you want to see more of this. I think they're going to like it. I need you to stop. That's too much. <laughs> Wash your mouth out. Don't swallow it.